Hey, what's up? This is Dilio coming to you with another video. Make sure you hit the right there. And in this video, we're going to talk about which platform should you use to create music. Now, every time I, I come on the platform, YouTube, Instagram, and I use a different platform that people are used to seeing me, the first thing that they ask is, did you quit using the previous platform? Did you quit using the previous platform? And you know, and I get this question a lot and it, it's cool. I guess it's nice to know that producers are keeping track of what I use. It's very complimentary to me, but what I would like to suggest to anyone who's wondering what I use or what I don't use is to, to try to appreciate the platform that they are and not try to focus so much on what I'm using or just because you don't see me using one platform means I quit using it. Um, I think it's best to appreciate being able to use the platform that you have Rather it be the FL Studio, Logic, Studio One, Pro Tools, MPC, Machine, whatever you want to use, that, that you're comfortable using that in a way that makes you happy. Um, I know from personal experience that there's so many tools available today for kids that were younger than my age right now. I remember back in my day, like we didn't have an FL Studio. We didn't have phones that we could just create whole songs from. So... I, I get it that there's, it, it's probably like really overwhelming that there are so many options to choose, especially when you're first getting into it and stuff like that. And I think that maybe watching someone use what you use helps you to build confidence uh, in the platform that you're using when really the truth of the matter is, is that you can be dope with whatever you got, man. You can be dope with a cell phone. You can be do, dope with FL Studio, Machine, a Ableton, you know, you can be dope right where you're at and you don't necessarily have to really care uh, what I use or what anyone else just uses, you know, for me personally, like, you know, I'm a fan of Timbaland, right? And so I see him using Ableton Live and I saw him using that for the longest while I was using Machine, you know, and, you know, I'm at the point now where I can understand that, okay, that's his preference. That's what he likes to use. That's cool. And what I want to do is to be confident and use the platform that I want. You know, even Reason, you know, like I got my first placement using Reason and I don't even really use Reason right now. And my thing is this, is that I like, I'm fortunate enough at this point, and it wasn't always this way, but I'm fortunate at this point to be able to use pretty much whatever I put my hands on. Uh, if you wanted me to pull up Reason, I could make a track on that. If you want to pull up Logic, I could, I could make a track on that. I pretty much have been fortunate enough to, to have my hands and to dabble into everything and to see what I like and what I don't like. But what, I, what particularly works for me in the moment may not necessarily translate to your experience. You know, you may be using FL Studio and may not feel a comfortable transition from FL Studio to machine or MPC or vice versa. You know, so I think it's very important to to learn how to be comfortable on the platform you use. And like I said, it's very complimentary that, that guys are paying attention to what I use and automatically assuming that I'm quitting using the previous platform that I'm using. Um, and, and, and I'll go back a few years. You know, I think that earlier on, I, I kind of wanted to develop this pride, you know, that's just pride like, oh, I'm... I'm you know, like I, I'm this machine user, so you know we the dopest, or I'm this NPC user. You know, and I, and and for one thing, it doesn't help your bottom line. It doesn't help you reach people uh, with your music. And at the end of the day, if if your client is listening to music, you think they're paying attention to what platform you're using? Do you think they care what kind of pad you use? Do you think they don't care? They're they're more focused on an experience. And in, in today's world, you know. I know that producers are stars now. I get that. And I see that, especially with the B-Stars community. I see that they're stars and all that stuff. And 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 I'll be the first to tell you, yeah, I want some of that exposure too. Yeah, I want some of that clout too. Because, you know, I like to be seen in a light that's successful on that platform as well. But at the same time, I have to remember that I'm dope right where I'm at. That I'm very creative right where I'm at. And while I may not have all the accolades and things that other producers have... I still have to remain confident that I have something special too and that um, that I still have an opportunity to still pursue it and learn from my lessons, you know. And that's another thing too that even I have to learn and I'm talking to myself on this is that I have to remember that my path is my path alone. And it can be frustrating because we're looking at other people's paths or we're looking at other other producers' platform and what they're using and comparing ourselves to these other producers and that can be a mistake. And even I have to remind myself that I, I shouldn't be doing that. 
that I should learn how to develop my craft. I should learn how to develop my content. I should be learning how to develop and build my own tribe for where I'm at. And, may, and, maybe, and maybe I took longer than a lot of people. I've been on YouTube uh, for a while and maybe it took me longer than other people. But at the same time, the more I focus on the fact that other producers got there before me or other producers got this keyboard before me or, or you know, like I, I see producers that have Moogs, right? And, or not necessarily Moogs, but they had the Moog one. I, I, I want the Moog one. Oh my gosh. I don't want my hands going out too far. Um, I want the Moog one. And there are other producers that's getting that way before me, but I can't neglect the fact that I got a Moog anyway, you know? So that's very important to remember those things and to understand that it's important. Once again, I'm gonna keep driving that point home to make sure that you know that you're dope and you're good at where you're at. If you wanna use whatever platform you use it, cool. And I think that, I think it's important to try not to care so much about what the other producer is using and care more about, are you creating content? Do you have a catalog? You know, I think it's more important to have a catalog of tracks. If you're trying to be a producer for someone else, it's more important to have a catalog of tracks using what you have instead of maybe having this in that platform. You know, even me, like I'm working on a catalog for other artists and other producers that I have to grow and develop and stuff like that, you know. Um, but like I said, I do come from a privileged point, but it wasn't always that way. I can go back to when I was shooting my early remake videos and I was, I was looking for help to get a machine studio. You know, I was working a job where I could barely get my hands on that. Now I got my hands on that. Things changed. Things, things got a little better. You know, I learned how to uh, put little things on online to, to help fund uh, the passion. And I was able to get other products as well. But it wasn't always that way. You know, I remember <laughs> getting the MK1 and everybody had the MK2 with all the colors. And I'm, I'm sitting here pressing the old MK1 and, and, it, and it's all greasy and the knobs are going out on it again. And there are still people today using the MK1, you know, and kudos to them for using that thing. You know, I don't know if it's still working for them, but kudos to them for that thing, you know, for them using that. And I think that's what matters most. And, uh, you know, to drive this point home, if you see me switching to another platform, notice that I'm always trying to, I'm always trying to see what fits for me in that moment. And if using FS Studio fits for me or machine fits me in that moment, I use it, you know, and I can never write off a company because you don't know what one company has up their sleeve despite their track record. You know, let's look at Akai. You know, I don't think anyone was taking them seriously and I wasn't really taking that company serious when they came out with the Renaissance, you know, and this is them catching up to Native Instruments with their machine studio, right? And I wasn't taking that serious until they came out with new standalone hardware that was both hardware, and that, that made me pique my interest. And I was able to go to Guitar Center and check that out. You know, and, and so while I may not be using the machine much, that doesn't mean that I'm keeping an eye out on the company because they could come out with something that changes the game, despite the past track record. You got to be careful to to learn from the track record, but not be stuck uh, or not stick our belief systems in previous track records of companies. So I always got to keep my eyes open because there might be a nugget somewhere that I may not discover if I stay in my own platform or if I stay right here and stay rigid, you know. Um, I sold BCC online because I was like, screw it. What are these kids up to? Let me see if I can get some of that. And I did, you know, and I'm, and I'm learning how to grow that brand. That's why you see me putting beat videos up on my YouTube channel now, amongst other things, you know, and I want to do top boxing and all the other things. But one thing I have to get back to is making this fun again. You know, I think that, and it was very interesting because I was in a panel and in this panel, oh, I was watching a panel. I wasn't in a panel. It'd be nice to be in a panel someday, but I was watching this panel and I don't know if you're a YouTuber or someone who's trying to do something online on social media platforms, but we all watch the numbers. And, and if the numbers don't look right, you know, it can ruin your day. And sometimes I have to kind of put that down. And learn how to be silly on this platform again. Learn how to have fun. Make a beat. Make a track. Make a song. Rap. You know. And, and do some things. And I know that it's, it's partially a business now. But there's always a balancing point. Because if you get so business minded. You lose out on the fun. And if you lose out on the fun. You don't. You lose out from the revenue that you can make from the business. So there's always a, a balancing point that you can make. In between all that. Same thing with the tools you use. You know. So 
if I could close with anything on this video, I would say appreciate that you're in a, in a time now where there's more than enough technology available to make music uh, versus 10, 20 years ago. And that you should appreciate the platform that you have um, and try not to focus so much on what other producers are using, but focus on more of the sound that you're making, focus more on the content that you can create and focus on the relationships that you can make to pursue, to propel your career forward, you know? And I hope that helps. And, you know, I just wanted to say that, and this is my final word on that. So if anybody wants to ask me, hey, you quit using ABCD? I say, hey, check out this video. And uh, that'll be it. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. I pretty much read them all. I'm trying to, I want to respond to all the comments. So if you got something you want to say, or if there's something you'd like to see me talk about, leave it in the comments. And uh, let's have fun on this platform. Let's, let's, let, let's, let's loosen our shirts a little bit and let's have some fun on this platform. All right. All right, I'm out of here. Peace.